I'm doing this now without testing the sound. That's a scary thing, but let's see if it works. Um, um, hi, Yannicke, how are you? I'm good, hello, yeah, hello, Stefan. <laughs> I hope the mic is working now. <laughs> so so uh, we're in the middle of lunch here at the mm -hmm. press room at uh, Messe Frankfurt, at Ambiente. Yeah. You've been working already quite hard. Yeah, I do. I only work here, yeah. It's not here for fun. Uh, no, no, it is fun, but it's also work for me here. Um, the Messe Frankfurt has asked me to um, to give some design tours uh, to the press, which is uh, which I took up as an interesting thing to do. Also, because for me as a designer, it's very interesting that I can I, I I guide people from the press around, but I can make some themes and tours where I can visit all kind of companies and ask them all kind of questions that you cannot ask always when you are, um, you know, on another type. They Sometimes they like to say more when there's press, sometimes there's more uh, if you have an audience. So I can ask also questions, uh, critical questions, which I really enjoy uh, because I think also if we are here at this fair, which is a super big fair and... Uh, it's also a world where a lot of things are going to change in the next few years. So I feel a bit like I, as if I am allowed to be a private investigator, uh, checking out where the world of consumerism is going. And also how all kind of companies deal with it. How do super old companies who have been around for 300, 400 years sometimes, how do they innovate? Yeah. Uh, or how do they deal with the fact that we have a, want to see something new all the time? And then you have also these startup companies, uh, like yesterday I visited a small company who has been around since September last year, yeah? Um, so these are complete different worlds. Uh, they also have a t complete different way of, of, of selling stuff, of dealing with, you know, the, these startups. They, they go over Instagram and, and the old guys, they have still the dinosaur methods, but... They're still working on an app. It's super interesting to maneuver between that and to also as a designer, because this is what you have to deal with too. I'm going to go stretch my arm for the cutlery. Do you have, did you get some cutlery for your lunch? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, uh, no? yeah. Did, did you want something? You, you're set, you're I set? I a knife, I need a spoon, a fork, yes. So. Oh, there it is. So, all set. So, normally when we do this, we talk about desserts. Oh, yeah. But uh, this is lunchtime. Dessert, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, we're not going to... So, well, we can talk about food as well. Um, we're, we're not going to only be talking about food, don't worry. We're going to mm -hmm. talk about uh, design industry. But um, uh, to give a, a private image of Inike Hans, mm -hmm. are you a dessert person or a starter person? Or what kind of like food are you? <laughs> what food are you? <laughs> I am a person who likes to eat food yeah. and not prepare food. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I'm not. I'm yeah. not such a cook, uh, yeah. uh, which is obvious uh, somehow uh, a thing which is not the most yeah. uh, fashionable thing to do. I think I believe that uh, many people are flirting with the fact that they are yeah. love cooking, but yeah. I don't. <laughs> Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I don't mind. And I like to cook simple dishes that yeah. are quickly done. I hate standing. Yeah. You know, I don't mind to do a Christmas dinner, yeah, but yeah. every day of the week, I don't yeah. like um, to do these complicated meals. So, um, yeah, I like uh, simple food. Yeah. I'm I'm very pleased also with just very very nice boiled mm. potatoes and mm. and and mm -hmm. and good vegetables. Mm. That's sometimes yeah. with could be very nice. I don't need all these. Uh, yeah, something. Yeah. Do, do you have like a favorite restaurant then? I mean, no. if you like eating food and not cooking food, because I, uh, I, I, that's me. Yeah, but I think favorite restaurants also have to do with the company you are often yeah. with. And um, I am traveling a lot, and there is in my city in Arnhem one restaurant that I go to when I am with my son and my mm. boyfriend, husband. Mm. So that's my favorite one because it has to do with the company you're in yeah. as well. And it's not s actually, it's not so much about the, it's a Turkish restaurant, but we love it. Mm. Yeah, nice. because it uh, feels like a family place yeah, for yeah, us. Yeah. 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 There's also good design then. I mean, or at least good service. I mean, making yeah, you feel oh, at home. Absolutely, the, the service is fine. Yeah. 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 But you move around now. You're um, for the last, over the last five years or so, is it that you've been moving from, from the Netherlands to London and now you're in Berlin? Yeah. Are, you, are you like a mobile person? Do you identify yourself as a mobile person? I think other people identify me by now as a mobile person. Um, and um, yeah, in a way, it looks a bit as if I'm trying out the modern mobility yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. um, but I also, um, 
I'm, yes, I moved to London five years ago, back to London because I studied there, worked there in the past. Uh, but I really wanted to find out a couple of things about design. And I thought uh, the topics that I was concerned with, bigger, um, smaller spaces, more costly spaces, having an effect on furniture and, and what we can use nowadays, how the furniture that we, we have less money and less space for furniture, we need different types of furniture. I wanted to look very much into the future of furniture design and what it means for a designer. I uh, went to London also because this is all much more under a magnifying glass because right. the city has big problems with yeah. space yeah. and so on. And mobility, uh, people moving out from the, in, from the suburbs into town to work and this mobility also means a lot to our uh, habits for living and what we bring with us, our laptops, our food or things like that. So it has a lot of effect on society but also on what designers need to do for that. I looked into that uh, with salons. Did you find the results? Yes, I made, uh, I organized 12 salons in London where we discussed all kinds of topics around this, these changes and I wrote everything down and made a pamphlet and um, with a little bit of some advice from my point of view, of course, it's very personal point of view, but saying this is what we could do. I showed also some examples, not only talk, but also products that this is the direction we could be heading for and based on that I was offered a professorship in Berlin yeah. so that's why two years ago I started to travel between London and Berlin and I still had my studio in Holland but that has now calmed down yeah. a bit so I have now since the summer I'm only in Berlin and Holland uh, because it's also madness to travel like that um, but um, uh, I had a look at this professorship for a bit because I didn't want to burn all my ships and then I decided this summer to go to Berlin with my small little office yeah. so I have a small office in Berlin which was before in London and I have the big studio in Holland where some people okay. work as well yeah do you, I mean, you are very uh, dedicated, you're very passionate, you can see that also. We've been talking, <laughs> we were talking here uh, at the press room with some wine, and we're very passionate. I think both of you and I are very passionate about this industry. Um, do you have like a, an agenda or a pamphlet? You talked about you did uh, some, some, some writing after London, but do you have like, this is the, <laughs> the rules of Inika Hans, do you have that? No, I yeah, you know... There's, uh, even if you go around on this fair, uh, there is a lot of things, uh, uh, you know, everyone is communicating, and you were spotting that as well yesterday, a lot of um, uh, communication about we are green, we are organic, we are um, uh, sustainable, and so on, and so on. So this is a big issue. Uh, but of course we, we, we all realize that we're in a world where we probably have to think about what we do still produce and, and actually it's all nice to say we are green and sustainable but the best way to produce less is stop producing. Mm, yeah. Well this is a d bit of a problem because we have also here an industry of, of, of uh, companies with families who rely on it and I'm a designer and I love to design so how to deal with that? How to to maneuver we around that it's not so easy to say stop producing so but how do you do that personally how did you do that well uh, for me i made at least some rules that i don't want to make anything anymore that we could have done also 20 years ago so i i really and that has to do with technology but it also has to do with that i really find it extremely interesting fascinating to look at how people behave nowadays and that uh, that means that we might need different typologies of objects than 20 years ago. For example, uh, 20 or 50 years ago, it was completely normal that a family would sit together and have dinner every day. And nowadays, this mobility means also that a son is going to football and then the father comes in later and you don't eat together or some people eat even in front of the television or uh, the, 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 or their laptops. No, and, but we all recognize that, yeah? So also let's not be, we can say, oh, uh, with, you know, there's a lot of things that we recognize that you shouldn't maybe do or what we find, but that's happening. And for these situations, you can also design different things. Uh, fascinating thing is also if you look at the ceramics industry and the and the big co uh, ceramic companies they used to se sell big sets of yeah. uh, tableware 12 yeah. Yeah. Uh, plates of this 12 yeah. plates of that and then the soup tureen and all kind of yeah. thing together nowadays people don't do it yeah. 
uh, first of all, they don't uh, have the space for it. Yeah. Secondly, also important, they don't get married, so you mm. don't uh, get these kind of sets mm. for getting married. Mm. Um, uh, second, uh, thirdly, uh, people are also much more informal. They don't need all this kind of formal stuff. Mm. They buy things at, 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 at uh, we buy, I do too. Mm. At, at flea markets and things like that mm. and from there you bring also different habits that it could be fine that yeah. you have a plate that is different yeah. uh, an underplate yeah. which is different than the plate on top of it yeah. and these kind of things also have mean that you can design differently yeah. so if you look at for instance i was at a, at an old ceramic company that um, have asked people to decorate their plates but it is all kind of different decorations and we're fine with that yeah. and 20 years ago that would not be acceptable yeah. Um, I need to keep track of the time because after 15 minutes it yeah. goes like. Okay. <laughs> um, when was the last time you bought something? I mean, I, I mean, there is like the questions you are addressing are enormously difficult. So, no. by, by taking them to like easy questions, then yeah. gives a, a perspective. Yeah, yeah. So, when was the last time you bought something you were proud of or you needed? Um, yeah, the thing is, I I'm not a big buyer. <laughs> That's really sad. Um, I'm a furniture designer and I have never bought a table. Mm. Um, um, I've I made one myself, mm. yeah? So this is, an, I, and I only need one table, a mm. uh, big table. Um, uh, you talked about living small as well, we talked about yesterday, last night, yeah. when we were having wine here. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I, I mean, yeah, the real, this is, you know, one of the realities also, if you ask people how often do you buy a new yeah. table, yeah. Um, it's not so often. Yeah, and I, if you, I look, my, if yeah. you look at, yeah. at how many tables are dropped in fairs, uh, this is a product fair, but yeah. furniture fair every mm. week in the world, mm. that mm. doesn't match with no. how much we need. Um, and I'm, you know, this is one of the things also in the, um, in the, in this, when I'm at, in this education, yeah. uh, where I'm in Berlin, I'm there like every two weeks for two, three days, but, um, this is also a big concern for the students. You know, the younger generation is really into this, these kind of questions. Uh, and what I try to teach them is, is really hold your breath a long, long time. First, have an excellent idea before you start designing it. So the, the idea has to be strong. It has to fit. You need to really know for who do I do this? What is the impact of my product before you even make it happen? And before it was uh, maybe also in education a lot about okay de learning how to shape and yeah. design, which is important. Yeah. It's an important skill. But in Holland they say think before you yeah. do. Yeah. So in this case, the, for design, I think it's also think before you do. Do you know what I miss? No. <laughs> how could you? Um, Did I eat my food? Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. I wish you would eat <laughs> some more of the food. Yeah, uh, you, know, you ask me all these questions. Yeah, no, I don't eat yeah. this, it doesn't look very sophisticated because it looks like I'm a... <laughs> yeah, a rabbit. Uh, <laughs> so while Inika is eating her salad, I'll prepare my question. No, where was I? No, oh, do you know what I need? No. In this world, in the, in the design industry, I need much more communications. I mean, I don't know how to do it, but I need, I need to be... I need someone to tell me why do I need this table? Why do I need this easy chair? Why do I need a new sofa? I mean, not just visually show it, display it on a fair and say this is nice, but talk to me. No, I mean, yeah, talk to me. That's actually also part of maybe why these uh, tours are quite nice yeah. because I go to these uh, companies and I ask them about the questions behind it. Like yeah. today we were also at a... At a a Dutch uh, company uh, that has uh, Delftware, yeah. the blue, Delft blue. And um, they have made new vases that are based on um, the fact that when the Dutch went to um, Asia in the past, they came back with all this Delft blue wear, but they also, uh, all the sailors came back with blue tattoos on their arms. So they have asked a very famous Dutch uh, uh, tattoo maker who makes tattoos for uh, the red or chili pepper and any right. sexy pop band in the world, uh, to and who is also an extreme expert and historical uh, aware of what is around in the world in tattoos, and they made with him a new uh, set of um, uh, of, 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 of uh, new uh, blueware. There's a lot of story there, and and as soon as you start to talk about it, suddenly everyone wakes up because they pass by. They think, oh, it's blue, Delft blue, yeah. blah blah. And then if you hear the story, suddenly uh, it's another cup of tea, and it also becomes a different product, and people have a different connotation to it. And that's it now.